Alright, hi guys, Spartan Subsix 5 here. Today I'm doing a uh, more detailed review on the Glock 17. Um, I'm, I've gotten a lot of personal messages in the past like four or five months asking about the Glock 17. Um, you know, comparing it to different guns and, you know, I picked one up a while ago and uh, I figured I'd do a more detailed review in the review I already got up. Um, this is a Glock 17, obviously the caliber 9x19 um, Gen 3. This is 100% stock as it comes. Um, this gun is currently my EDC everyday carry. Um, I've had the gun for a decent while now. I've been carrying it for about the past two weeks. We're going to unload it here. Magazine is loaded because it is my EDC and I carry it. There's no point in carrying a gun without unloaded magazine. Okay. Nothing in there. Alright. Um, so, Glock 17. Basic specifications um, and traits the Glock 17 has. All right, first off, we're going to go over the slide. The slide in the Glock 17 is a hammer forged, tenifer finished slide, meaning the coating on here is tenifer. The tenifer coating itself is harder than steel. It's the exact same thing that's on the XDM and the uh, XD series and the Smith and Wesson MPs, except on them it's called melanite because Glock owns the trademarks to the name tenifer. All right, the barrel on this is a polyagonally rifled barrel, um, but the polyagonal rifling in here is unique to Glocks. It's not true polyagonal rifling. It's a derivative of polyagonal rifling that Glock has pat patented. Um, the barrel on this Glock is just a standard barrel. Like I said, it's 100% stock. Um, the frame of a Glock is made out of Zytel, which is a very strong, durable plastic with some flex to it. So the plastic's not going to crack, you know, it's not going to, you know, get that white mark when you bend plastic, when it flexes. It's a very durable plastic. Um, Glock was a plastics expert. That's why, you know, this being the first widely adopted polymer frame gun, being that it was so successful and it worked from the start, just like the AK-47. The AK-47 has been around since 1947, and it has been a phenomenal gun, virtually unchanged in the operating me in the uh, action of the gun. This is the AK-47 of handguns. This gun is extremely reliable, extremely durable, and extremely dependable. Glock's slogan is uh, confidence to live your life. Um, well, I believe it was either 60, I think, yeah, 60 percent of all law enforcement agencies in the United States carry this weapon. Um, not, you know, the Glock 17. A lot of them do carry the Glock 17. Some of them carry the Glock 20, the Glock 19, and the Glock 22. Um, some of you can carry the Glock 21, which is uh, the 45 caliber. Bigger, wide gun. The 45 and the 10 millimeter are the ones with the thicker grips and thicker slides, measuring in at a width of 1.27 inches in the width. The 9 millimeter, the 45 gap, the 40 Smith and Wesson, and the uh, 380 ACP. Um, the 380 ACP, the Glock, the Glock, um, I believe the Glock 20, 20 I want to say 25. Um, yeah, Glock 25 and Glock 20. Don't quote me on that. I know one of them is in 380 ACP, but it's not available in the United States. Trying to remember all of the Glock names: the Glock 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 36. It takes a while. Um, I know a decent amount of them, but not every one off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, the diameter of the slide on this is 1.18 inches. Um, the magazine release on this is made out of plastic. Now, this is a thing that a lot of anti-Glock people will say. Well, the magazine release is plastic. You know, why isn't it metal? There's a very good reason for that. And let me just grab an unloaded magazine to show you guys why. What did I do with that? Yeah, let's take a 33-round mag. Um, all right. And you notice a Glock magazine is steel. Cape. Uh, Cased in polymer. Now, what this does is this makes you know resistant to you know obviously corrosion, makes it a little more you know durable as far as you know flex goes and drop force and all that stuff. It kind of buffers the magazine a little bit. The disadvantage to that is on the the 45 caliber Glocks, um, my Glock 21. The reason that the grip is so thick is because it's a double layered magazine. It's metal and then polymer. Now, on a 9 9 by 19, it doesn't matter. 
and you look at the grip thickness on the double stack 45 here, the XDM45, and the grip thickness on the two is about the same, and this is a 9mm. Now, that's the one downfall that I don't like about Glocks. If you have big hands, 21's just fine, but for me, I just have medium-sized hands. The size of the Glock 17's nice. But anyway, got sidetracked. This magazine lip, this lip right here in the magazine is plastic. This is not metal. So if you buy an aftermarket aluminum or steel magazine release, you're just causing more wear to the gun than you think you're preventing. And the wear is actually on the magazine lip here. If you have a steel magazine release, it'll wear and rub a lot more than your magazines will either A, just fall out, or they'll come down too far, they'll click in and they won't be up far enough for it to properly load the rounds, so you'll have failure to chamber. The gun will fail to chamber rounds properly. Um, now this isn't just after like a few mag changes, this is after, you know, a long time. Some people just prefer the aluminum ones. Personally, I recommend stay with the polymer mag release. Um, there's a couple things on the Glock um, that I personally am going to change. On the Glock, the guide rod is a captive guide rod, which is nothing wrong with that, um, but the guide rod itself is plastic. Um, I'm not a huge fan of polymer guide rods. Now, in a smaller gun with a non captive guide rod, not a non captive recoil spring, like a Ruger LC9, hey, that's a subcompact, it's a non captive um, spring. I don't care. This guide rod could be plastic. But on a gun here with a captive spring, I, and then on a full size handgun that I'm going to be shooting a lot, I want a stainless steel guide rod. And those are some you can get at aftermarket. Another thing that's nice about Glocks is the parts are really cheap. Um, you can get OEM parts for dirt cheap, and aftermarket parts are generally pretty cheap. You want to get a stainless steel guide rod and some steel sights. The sights in the Glock are polymer. They're high impact polymer, so if you drop it you know, like on a table, it's not going to do anything. If you drop it in the concrete, it's probably going to ding a little bit. I do like the cup and ball sights in the Glock. That's one thing I just love about it. I'm a huge fan of three dot sights as well. That's what I shoot when I shoot competitively down at the range. Um, like this here, if you don't know what three dot are. Like I love my XDM sights. This is the only gun I've ever bought from the factory. Um, only handgun I've ever bought from the factory. But I've had never had anything I've wanted to change on. Um, but yeah, the cup and ball sights, if I can find some steel ones, because these are good sights for tactical speed speed shooting like not you know speed shooting is speed target shooting but tactical running gun you know you're running pull running pull because you can sight this a lot quicker a little bit quicker anyway I know, not a lot but a little bit quicker I can anyway than three dot sights um, slide release the slide release in the Glock is stamped steel it's been the same on all the Glocks since the Gen 1 you know, a nice slide release. The only thing is, if you have smaller hands, you might want to get an extended one there. Like for me, I can hit it no problem. I mean, it is very flush. It could be a little more grippy. It could be more pronounced, but it's not. Um, the reason for that is because the Glock can be very streamlined. Then You can get extended slide releases for this, um, which, you know, eh, I'm not going to get. I don't really care about that. I mean, I can hit this slide release just fine. Back plate, slide plate on the back, is plastic. With reinforced with steel. Now, like these, I might get a custom one on there. I don't know yet what I want to get. That's the thing I like about Glocks is you can get a custom slide plate, you can get it engraved wherever you want. I don't know if I'm going to get that or when I'm going to get that, but hopefully soon. Um, all right. Now the takedown of a Glock. You know, pretty simple. You know, snap cap. You don't have to do this. I just don't like dry firing my Glock. Pull the slide back, and this is this is called the slide lock right here. These little levers, you pull the slide back a little. You have to dry fire it in order to, you know, be able to take the slide off. Otherwise, the striker is going to catch in the sear. Now, as you see in here, the Glock is extremely simple. Now, what you got here is you got a firing pin safety, you got a striker slash firing pin, striker guide back plate and inside here in the firing pin in, inside the firing pin channel is a channel liner which is a piece of plastic that guides a firing pin you do not need to oil a Glock firing pin if you do you're gonna have you're gonna have problems the channel liners in there 
to guide the firing pin and not wear the spring itself or the firing pin. So there's no need for oil inside that. Now over here on the uh, frame, and you're going to see the simplicity of a Glock at its best. Um, this is the most simple semi-automatic firearm I have ever shot or owned. I mean, as far as the trigger goes, you have a trigger bar. Here's your uh, detent that activates your trigger safety, or the firing pin safety when the trigger is pulled. That slides back, pushes up the trigger safety. And at the same time, this is called your, your trigger bar right here, which is also the sear itself. And literally, what happens when you pull the trigger is that sear just hits on with this little piece right here, which is called the connector, and rides that down. And then when the, when the slide comes back forward, there's a piece of uh, metal that was mach not machined out right there, as you can see, or machined this way, so that it hits the, the connector right there. Here, I'll see if I can do this without, you know, and that pops the sear back up. Now, on the uh, Glock 18s, how this works is it's very ingenious and very simple. There's just a little nub that protrudes off the top of the sear right here, and when you flip the switch on the side, it pops something, pops a little detent down that hits that. And as soon as the slide goes forward, first it hits, first it hits this uh, connector, and then it hits the sear, so it keeps it going. Glock 18s are very simple in the fact that they're selective fire. Fortunately, unfortunately, you know, regular citizens can't own those. You have to have a class three to do that. But uh, I mean, I've seen videos on how they work, and they're fairly simple. Um, the only parts consisting of the Glock internally, the frame, if you exclude the locking block, just fire control mechanisms, you literally have your trigger, your trigger bar, your connector, and your trigger spring right there. That's all that's in there. Very simple. Your ejector is part of the trigger housing, which comes out, which is a piece of polymer, of hardened polymer. That literally comes out. You pop this pin out here, tire unit comes out. Very easy to take down. You, you can detail, detail strip a Glock, a uh, Glock, without using any tools other than a punch. I put the slide back on. We're just gonna. There goes that snap cap. Can just show you it was a snap cap, not a real live round. Function test. All right. Seems to work good. The reason I do not like to dry fire the Glock is because there have been occurrences that I've read about on the internet, crack breech face right here, we're over with consistent thousands and thousands of dry fires, you actually push the breech face out and just type in Glock cracked breech face on Google Images and you'll see what I'm talking about. Nothing to worry about, I mean you can dry fire a gun and take it apart, I'm just over, I, I take way too good a care of my guns like I baby them. Like I don't, you know, hold it over and drop the slide and drop the slide. I ease the slide forward. Don't need to do that. I'm just a little OCD when it comes to my guns. Um, as you will know, as my loyal viewers will know, people who watch my videos all the time, that I'm very concerned about the finish all the time and everything like that. But um, as far as accuracy in this gun goes, this gun is pretty accurate. I mean, it's not as accurate as the XDM-45, but the XDM-45 comes stock from the factory with a match grade barrel. This gun is a, you can, you can hit a target at 100 meters with this, a mad sized target, no problem. I mean, if you don't have any wind, you know, you compensate for the uh, elevation a little bit. Not hard at all. 50 meters, you can even hit a mad, you can hit a mad sized target, no problem. I mean, even someone who doesn't shoot all the, who, who's new to shooting could probably hit a mad sized target at 50 meters with this. Um, you know, 25 meters, you group about like this. XDM will group about like this. I mean, and that's if you're standing there taking your time on each shot. And the trigger on this, I don't, it's about five and a half pound pull, the XDM. Mine came from the factory that about a three and a half. They're advertised as a five pound pull, but I know my XDM trigger isn't that hot heavy. I am not a massive fan of the trigger on the, on the Glocks. Um, I am going to do a trigger job on this eventually, or just replace the uh, connector with a three pound connector. Or I could just modify the connector and polish it up, make it three pound. Probably end up doing that. Oh, I don't have to spend any money. Um, yeah, overall the grip feel of it, it's it's different. Like if you're used to a 1911, you know, if you've been shooting 1911s your whole life, you're probably not going to like the way this feels in your hand. Um, but if you have a, been shooting a variety of handguns over your lifetime, 
you know, this will be just fine. I mean, I like the way Glock pulls, because the sights come right up. Max DM, the grip is a little different. Sights come right up for that. I practice with many different guns. So, I get used to the pull on each individual gun instead of just practicing with one, getting really good with it. I practice a lot with my other guns as well, XDM, CZ Duo, LC9, conceal carry inside the waistband. This one here is a little tricky to get good with at 25 meters. But, with enough practice, I could hit pretty nice with it. Um, but yeah, if you guys got any comments or questions uh, regarding the uh, Glock 17, oh, hang on, I got one more little uh, treat I'm going to show you guys here that I picked up. I picked up a weapon light for it. Um, now these you can just get right on there. I mean, I'm, I'll go over the weapon light here in a minute. Now you guys are probably going to give me shit for how I'm putting this on here with the gun pointed the way it is. But like I said, the firearm is verified, unloaded. Again, the only loaded magazine in the room right now is this one. That's the one for my EDC that I have on me all the time, as you can see. So, Alright, this is a weapon light. It's a, what is it, Nebro Protec Elite. Got about a 200 loom flashlight on it. LED with a uh, defensive strobe. Looks kind of cool in the Glock. Fits in my XDM too. Um, it'll fit on like a Smith & Wesson MMP 1911. Um, it's a pretty decent little weapon light. It's all aluminum construction. No plastic on it. Um, it's I got it at Walmart for 40 bucks. But seeing as it was all aluminum construction, a new generation LED had strobe, 200 looms, I mean, I couldn't pass it up. I mean, I thought maybe, hey, you know, if it's a piece of shit, big deal, I'll just, you know, throw it in a freaking pile, you know, the other junk that I have. But, you know, I kind of like it. It pulls really nice. And that defensive strobe on there is really nice. You know, if you have someone break in your house, you pull that up, that'll blind them. Um, so, yeah, hit up Walmart. Check out the sporting goods aisle because the Walmart I, I go to and the other Walmarts I've been to, they do have these weapon lights in there. Like I said, they're 40 bucks. You may think, oh, it's a weapon light from Walmart. What a piece of crap. But actually, hey, it's not that bad. So, you know, if you want to uh, look up a little bit out, look up a little bit info on it, hit it up on the internet. Type in what is it? N E B O, and then Protec Elite H P one nine zero is the uh, model or the uh, name, type, and model number. But yeah. Um, anyway, kind of interesting. Not something I carry on me, my EDC. This is more for, you know, night shooting at the range or, you know, tactical training. I might get a semi-munition adapt and a semi-munition slide for this. So you can, uh, so I can uh, maybe do a little bit of semi-munition training, but I don't know if I can, how to acquire that. I haven't seen any anywhere on the internet, um, but that would definitely be cool. But yeah, that is the Glock 17. If you guys got any questions or comments, feel free to send me a message and I'll make a video. If you want me to do a takedown video, detail strip, let me know. Spartan 765 out.